second. This is your seat at the table, and we're going to knock out this other uh, tabletop war game I've had for a long time. And it's been sitting up here on my table. It's been in my would-be queue to get it done, and uh, as you can tell, one of our I got a cat that's decided it makes a great place to uh, to rest on. It's starting to crush the damn box, so I thought we'll just go ahead and knock it out. This is also a combat standard combat series game number one A from the Gamers Corporation. Uh, game designer is Dean N. Essig, and I don't remember exactly. Hi, Frankie. Hey, it's Frankie, and Frankie's not the one that's been sitting on the box. Sissy has, but she wanted to say hi. Uh, I don't remember when I bought it. It says it's second edition. Uh, I think it was on a clearance shelf at a game store. 20 odd years ago when I bought it, to be truthful. I don't know if there is a date on it or not. I played it a little bit myself, uh, mostly just to muck around with it, but I never, I've never had a player to sit down with me. Let's see, there's no, no date in here, it might be in the rule book. It says, The Gamers Incorporated, 500 West 4th Street, Homer, Illinois. Quality War Game since 1988. I don't know if they're still in business or not. I mean, I've always liked these style of games. Uh, there's a lot. You can get quite a few similar types of um, uh, computer game versions uh, today. And like I said, I play uh, uh, not Age of Empires. Oh, for Pete's sake, I can't think of it off the top of my head. I play it off and on. Right now, I've been uh, dabbling with Dwarf Fortress, and that is uh, a Lulu if you've never played it. So anyway, it comes with a couple uh, little punky uh, six-sided dice. Traditionally, I never use these kind of dice. If I get When I get them like this, uh, it's, uh, I'm surprised it's still in the box. Usually, I either chuck them in a jar somewhere, or I just chuck them, because I like the full-size traditional uh, gamers six-sided dice because they're easier to keep track of so we got a really nice map you know so we're talking Stalingrad pocket the Wehrmacht's greatest disaster so we're gonna basically fight out and recreate uh, the battle of Stalingrad and the regions of, of vicinity around it so like I said nice little map I think I've had it out of the box maybe twice over the years. Standard Combat Series 1994. That's the that's the date on here. Gamers All Rights Reserved. Introduction. Note about version 1.6. Component information. How to play the sequence of play, movement, terrain effects on movement, stacking, reinforcements, overrun restrictions, overrun combat. Terran effects on combat, step losses, retreat, retreats, no retreat option, advance after combat, export, exploitation, supply, out of supply effects, designer notes. Welcome to the gamers and our definition of total game support. We are here to help. Rules help. And they give you a phone number to call. It tells you how long ago it was. And a lot of places don't give you phone numbers anymore. Uh, and online home. We are on Genie. If you are and you can find us in Category 4, Topic 43, Page 805. I check in most days and will be able to answer questions. That is a long time ago, my friends. Letters and facts. Your input is important, etc., etc. So, standard combat series. Stalin. Songrad Pocket 2, Table Contacts, General Rules, Stacking. This is a little bit more in-depth book for rules. And the, I don't see no date. I'm going to guess it's still 1995 based on what's in that other one. Although this might have been added to the existing run on the boxes after they created them. Anyway. Then, of course... Like I said, I, I plucked out a few pieces, mostly to kind of punk around with it a little bit. For the lion shirt, as you can see, I have not removed all my pieces, and there's quite quite a few. There are two, two full tag boards full of these things, and then we have a priceless and order blank for December, 11 December, 95, various games from See the game series that's available: Civil War Brigade, Tactical Combat, Gettysburg Magazines. See, I think 
I know I've got one. I think I did a video on one of the, the other version, the other game I had that I got from these guys. And uh, once again, sometimes we buy stuff because it's interesting or we get a deal on it or it's, I don't want to say cheap, but cheap is what it is. An opportunity presents itself and it just sits on our shelf and never quite ever sees the light of day, which is kind of sad. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but only, you know, just for myself. Um, I know I harp on it quite a bit. I have some extremely veritable hours for work environment makes it very hard to sit down and say okay every Thursday night let's get together and game uh, like I used to back in the day uh, I mean I really could put my foot down and and establish that thing but I may also need to uh, take into account that you know my wife's not a big gaming fan uh, and we have a small house she's not gonna be keen on be going somewhere else for four or five hours a day uh, for four or five hours a week to play a game that she's not ball or able to go uh, and then I have to find a gaming group and people that everybody schedules, you know, life gets in the way kind of thing. There's a couple of gaming stores I have in my mind. You know, I'm 56. I'm 56 uh, uh, next month. And I honestly, 57? It's more 1966. You do the math. I don't want to deal with the math right now. But when I get to that quote retirement age, uh, I have fully intend to, to devote a week, uh, a, a day or two a week, to my hobby and playing pe uh, with pe uh, gaming with people. And if that means going to the local game stores and setting up in their game room with a sign, a pathetic sign saying, "Hey, sit down, um, let's play something," then so be it. Right. Meanwhile, I live vicariously through uh, this channel and discussing and the information and stuff that I have and all the wonderful things that, that involve this hobby and the many discourses and conversations I get with my other uh, with my subscribers and the uh, uh, whoever else drops in uh, I want to be note that I'm very grateful to all of you who have subscribed to the channel I've seen quite a bit of growth this past six months which is really surprising uh, I mean, really, Battletech is very popular today and it has a very th strong fan base, much stronger than any of the other game systems that I have to date reviewed for my channel. And there's, re there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, we have currently 427 and I need 500 plus. I need at least 500 to be able to do the little, the little uh, comment things that you can do for YouTube, which would be nifty if I could do that is what it is. I'm fixing to do a, a deal on Ghost of Winter because some, one of, one of y'all requested it, and uh, I spent quite a bit of notes on that particular subject. Uh, I also want to eventually get around to doing uh, redemption rights, which, like I said, one of the things I don't like about ordering things off the internet is that you you know in this case somehow or another. I didn't think I got ordered, so I ended up ordering the second one. So now I have a spare, and I can only read one. And these things are these things were fairly expensive, and and I, I don't have the didn't have the resources to send it back right away. So I'm kind of eating it is kind of where we go down with it. Another issue, of course, if you've seen some of my other videos. Uh, I'm not a fan of PDFs, but I'm also in a situation where I just cannot buy hard copy versions of some of the older material that I don't have for Battletech. And that this, the rich story, lore, and history of the game is fairly well uh, correlated. And so I've bought a number of PDFs in the last uh, few few months that I would never have in the past in part because trying to get a secondhand version of the book is ex it's impossible and or they're hideously expensive I mean they're two two times and up I've seen some in the hundred you know some, when you see a book that's forty dollars when it's new and then uh, somebody's now selling a new cop quote new copy for seven hundred dollars really what do you what I mean gee if you get away with it and there's somebody to buy that, I see I, I would be leery of something like that because how the hell do I know that they actually had that book? I'm gonna my uh, I'm gonna pay them that seven hundred dollars on the odds that they're going to send me the book and it turns out that they're sending me no book at all, or it's a damaged book, or it's not what they advertise, and then what? You try to get your seven hundred bucks back. 
I don't trust any of the, the, the systems and things. It's just, is you know, it goes down that road and you kind of get in, it just, I would never spend $700 for a game supplement of any sort. I mean, honestly, there was a, a, a supplement that came out for Star Wars, uh, one of the versions a few years ago, it's probably been 10 years ago, and it was $100 plus. Dollars. And as much as I love Star Wars, I surely could not spend a hundred dollars on it. So it, I never got it, and I haven't looked for it to be honest. Uh, Might have been secondhand versions that are much cheaper. Who knows? I've gotten lucky. Ironically, a lot of the fan pro stuff, there's still hard copies and brand and near new or brand new condition available from game stores and stuff that gets advertised on eBay. It just it surprises me. Whereas the catalyst material. Uh, if you don't get it when the hard print when they first start offering it, if they offered it as a hard print at all, you're hosed. And uh, the rest of it's in PDF format, which I'm grateful for because if you go back 20 years, that didn't that wasn't an option. You either bought the book when it came out or you didn't. And if you went looking for it after the fact, you might not ever get it. That's just the way it rolls out. And that's just my opinion on it anyway. So anyway, uh, until next time, this is Rick, and you guys have a great weekend.